Plant tissues are aggregates of uh, structurally similar cells performing the same or complementary functions. They can be broadly categorized based on their location in the plant and the nature and type of cells that comprises them. In this lecture video, I will not go through these categorizations as they usually uh, overlap in many instances. I'll begin with meristematic tissues, which are uh, permanent regions of growth in the plant. You will find here relatively small, actively dividing cells that are totipotent. This means these cells are not yet groomed to perform a specific function until they are pushed to areas of uh, maturation as the plant grows in size. Apical meristematic tissues are found at the tips, thus we have the shoot apical meristem and the uh, root apical meristem. You can uh, visualize a growing plant decreasing in length in the opposite direction as new cells are being added by these tissues at the tips. This is called primary growth, leading to the formation of primary meristems, namely the protoderm, the ground meristem, and the procambium. You can see these primary tissues just beneath the tips. It is not hard to follow that as cells move away from the tips, they start to differentiate and start performing specific functions. These three primary meristematic tissues will eventually give rise to the uh, primary dermal, ground, and vascular tissues. Plants that remain fleshy their entire life is only limited to uh, primary growth, but remember that there are woody plants. The bulk of uh, woody tissues comes from another type of meristematic tissue called the lateral meristems. They are no longer found at the tips as they are usually embedded within the mature tissues of the plant. As cells are being produced by these tissues, the plants start to uh, increase in girth, which is usually referred to as secondary growth. Two types of lateral meristems are observable in flowering plants. The vascular cambium, which produces secondary tissues that function primarily for support and conduction, such as the xylem and the phloem. And the corcambium that produces the periderm, a component of the bark. For now, it is enough to learn that woody tissues are a result of secondary growth and supplied by the cells from the lateral meristems. Again, the vascular and the core cambium. Another type of uh, meristematic tissue called intercalary meristem occurs in grasses. It is located beneath the apical meristems in the vicinity of nodes where you can find the leaves. These tissues add to stem length, thus every time a grass is cut, it will continue regenerating the grass which is quite annoying to lawn keepers and farmers. To uh, sum it up, meristematic tissues represent a group of uh, unspecialized cells. They give rise to simple tissues with simple functions. Simple tissues are made up of cells that are almost similar in appearance. They are uh, sometimes grouped based on the thickness of their walls. Thin walls of course indicate younger cells, while additional thickenings are apparent as these cells get older. Parenchyma tissue composed of parenchyma cells are the most abundant in flowering plants. They are uh, usually spherical in shape but their thin walls flatten when they are pushed side by side by neighboring cells. They have large vacuoles and store a variety of phytochemicals. Their functions are variable depending on the plant and they can also have uh, alternative names based on these functions. For example, in water lilies and other aquatic plants, the intracellular spaces are prominent. This type of parenchyma tissue with extensive connected air spaces is referred to as erenchyma. It allows for buoyancy and efficient gas exchange. Parenchyma cells containing numerous chloroplasts on the other hand are referred to as chlorenchyma tissue, which uh, function mainly in photosynthesis. Also, the soft edible parts of fruits and vegetables it consists largely of parenchyma with storage functions. Parenchyma cells can still divide to repair the tissue despite the fact that they are no longer meristematic cells. When uh, cells start to grow an additional cell wall layer, they become more rigid and can start support functions. Here, if you go near the edge, there are cells that have unevenly thickened walls. You will notice the thickenings usually at the corners. These cells comprise the colenchyma tissue. Typically, they are longer than they are wide and their walls are pliable as well as strong and provide flexible support for both growing and mature organs, such as leaves and uh, floral parts. You can bend the plant to a degree that it will not break, and when you release it, it goes back to its original position. These plastic and elastic properties of plants can be greatly attributed to colenchyma tissue, as parenchyma are quite weak while uh, sclerenchyma are too hard to provide flexibility. While uh, colenchyma and parenchyma are living tissues, sclerenchyma cells are dead at maturity. They are characterized by very thick walls and they have lost their cytoplasm through time. Their walls are also impregnated with lignin, an organic substance that makes them tough and hard. 
Some are cubical or cuboidal in shape that's referred to as clarids or stone cells. Have you eaten the uh, chico fruit? They have this. That's why uh, you have the sandy texture when eating it. And maybe those were also the same cells in pairs. Elongated sclerenchyma cells are called fibers. The patterns they create uh, are prominent in your wooden furnitures. Both stone cells and fibers are responsible for the hardness of the wood. Thus, they primarily function for support of woody tissues. A few important tissues are composed of two or more kinds of cells and are referred to as complex tissues. Xylem is made up of various cells which are mostly dead at maturity. Think of uh, elongated cells joined end-to-end -end that conducts water after it is being absorbed by the roots. Trachids and uh, vessel elements are the prominent water-conducting cells of the xylem. But sclerenchyma fibers for support in some parenchyma may also be present. Vessels are long tubes made up of individual cells called vessel elements and are open at each end. They also have uh, bar-like strips of wall material. The tubes are formed when the cells are joined end-to-end. -end. Trachids have relatively thick secondary cell walls, are tapered at each end and uh, overlapping with those of other trachids. Trachids have no openings similar to those of vessels, but there are usually pairs of pits present wherever two trachids are in contact with one another. Pits are areas in which no secondary wall material has been deposited and they allow water to pass from cell to cell. Most conduction is upward and downward, but some is lateral or sideways. The uh, lateral conduction takes place in the rays. Ray cells which also function in food storage are actually parenchyma cells that are produced in horizontal rows by special cells of the vascular cambium. In woody plants, the rays radiate out from the center of the stems and roots, like the spokes of a wheel. Phloem tissue which conducts solutes, mostly sugars, uh, produced via photosynthesis is composed mostly of two types of cells. The relatively large, more or less cylindrical sieve tube members have uh, narrower, more tapered companion cells closely associated with them. Sieve tube members like vessel elements are laid end-to-end, -end, forming sieve tubes. However, the end walls have no large openings. Instead, the walls are full of small pores through which the cytoplasm extends from cell to cell. These porous regions are called sieve plates. I expect you have a picture of a sieve in mind. Sieve tube members have no nuclei at maturity but they retain the cytoplasm that is very active in the conduction of solutes. In some experiments, removing the companion cell results in the death of the sieve tube. Companion cells thus share its metabolic products to the sieve tube members that dedicate their lives to solute transport. The outermost layer of cells of all plant organs is called the epidermis. It is in direct contact with the environment that is subjected to various modifications and can harbor different kinds of cells. It is usually one cell thick. Epidermal cells secrete a fatty substance called cutin within and on the surface of the outer walls. Cutin forms a protective layer called the cuticle. The thickness of the cuticle determines how much water is lost through the cell walls. It is also resistant to pathogens. In leaves, the epidermal cell walls perpendicular to the surface often assume bizarre shapes that give them the appearance of a jigsaw puzzle. Epidermal cells of roots produce tubular extensions called the root hairs that greatly increase the surface area for absorption. Leaves also have numerous pores, the stomata, bordered by pairs of specialized epidermal cells called guard cells. Some epidermal cells may be modified as glands that secrete protective substances that repel insects and animals that might consume them. In woody plants, the epidermis is sloughed off and replaced by the periderm after the corcambium begins producing new tissues that increase the girth of the stem or root. 
The periderm constitutes the outer bark and is primarily composed of wax-like cork cells, which are dead at maturity. While the cytoplasm of cork cells are still functioning, it secretes a fatty substance, subirin, into the walls that makes it waterproof to protect the phloem and other tissues beneath the bark from drying out. Some parts of the corcambium form pockets of loosely arranged parenchyma cells that do not contain subirin. They are called blentis cells and function in gas exchange between the air and the interior of the stem. I would like to thank the various sources of pictures and clips I'm using in this production and in my future lectures. God bless us all. This is Professor Brian Ives Araneta. I'll see you again soon.